In Act 1, Scene 2 of Julius Caesar, Caesar arrives at the course, a sacred foot race, with his wife Calpurnia and his friends Antony, who's running in the race, Brutus, Cassius, Casca, and Cicero. Caesar tells Antony to touch Calpurnia to shake off her sterile curse, and we learn that those running the race are believed to have the power to cure infertility. A soothsayer loudly cautions Caesar to beware the Ides of March, March 15th. While the others watch the race, Brutus and Cassius stay behind. Cassius tells Brutus how much the Romans admire and respect him. Jealous of Caesar's divine status, Cassius wonders if the public would worship him if they knew his vulnerabilities. He tells a story of when he had to save Caesar from drowning. When they hear three shouts from the crowd at the race, Brutus fears the people choose Caesar for their king. Cassius jumps on the fact that Brutus doesn't want Caesar crowned. He says, what should be in that Caesar? Why should that name be sounded more than yours? Brutus is open to considering Cassius's plot. Caesar returns and sees the unrest in Cassius. When Brutus and Cassius ask Casca what happened at the race, Casca explains that Caesar three times refused the crown Antony offered, and the crowd cheered his refusals. At the third refusal, Caesar fainted and fell down, and through Brutus we learn that Caesar has the falling sickness, which is epilepsy. Casca mentions that Flavius and Morellus have been put to silence for desecrating Caesar's images in Act 1, Scene 1. Cassius tells us his plan to forge letters to turn Brutus against Caesar. In this scene, we meet Shakespeare's Caesar as a man in a childless marriage, deaf in one ear and made infirm by falling sickness. But the implication that Flavius and Morellus have been executed closes the scene with a glimpse of tyranny. We also first encounter the conspiracy already underway against Caesar. Cassius's aim is clearly to recruit Brutus, Caesar's favorite, to their cause and elevate him in Caesar's place. This scene juxtaposes the conspirators' unrest with Caesar's refusal to be crowned. Is Caesar being modest or putting on a show? Or are the conspirators wrong about his ambition? Cassius tells Brutus that Rome's nobility has been desecrated not because fate destined it, but because the Senate has failed to act. This theme of fate versus free will helps define the different factions of the play.